it's really important for us to recognize our own past traumas, our own core wounds, our maladaptive features, because a lot of those things not only make us susceptible to toxic people and abusers, but they actually cause us to be attracted towards them. And if you're somebody who didn't have a good relationship with your caregivers, you were never able to form a solid, reliable, emotional bond with your caregivers, if you're always in that state of uncertainty, kind of never really knowing where things stood between you and the other person. You always felt like you were chasing them for their affection. You always felt like that affection and that the caring would perhaps come, that it might come, but you never really felt that steady, reliable, emotional bond. If that's how your upbringing was, then you are somebody who, who does attract people with similar traits. In other words, somebody who attracts toxic people. Because when you're with toxic people, there is this unreliability around their emotional giving. There is this ambiguity around where you stand with them. There's like this implicit promise that there's something there for you, but you can never really get your hands on it. And because that's what you're used to, because your, your life, your upbringing, you experienced that a lot and that was your norm. You attribute deep meaning to those things, almost as if that's love, as if that's a true connection, as if maybe if the person does or says the right thing just a few times and they really sink in with you, you feel like they're your soulmate and you have to fight for it, fight for them. When you have those maladaptive features because you had this upbringing where you didn't have healthy emotional bonds with your caregivers, it's a two-way street because you are attracted to people who will treat you like that. And people who have those traits are attracted to people like you who will entertain them. So it's almost like there's a win-win. And when, when a healthy person comes across in your life, you don't really see them, you don't really notice them. So, it's when you don't realize the impact that your upbringing has on who you are today and how who you are today influences the people you're attracting to your life that you, you'll find yourself in toxic disaster after toxic disaster. Because it's normal. You think that's how love is supposed to be. And you just don't really recognize people who actually have healthy traits. So it's just important to, to know that sometimes you have to question your own instincts around, you know, what is love? What is a healthy relationship? What do you really want? And if you find yourself having bad experience after bad experience, just take that as a learning point for you. Because eventually, if you, if you go through this, the same bad experience enough times, you'll wake up to the fact that, you know, there, some change is needed. It doesn't mean you'll be fixed because you've acknowledged it. It just means that you've taken a step in the right direction because now you know you need to think of, um, you know, the next steps to to try to find a way of attracting healthier people, of wanting healthier people. Because in a way, you don't want healthy people because it's almost like the familiarity of these ambiguous, unreliable, distant people and the fact that you want to win these people over because maybe you didn't really win your care caregivers over the way you wanted. It's almost like you want to redeem yourself by winning these people over. You think that that'll somehow put your world into a better position. You know, you might daydream, you might fantasize about the relationship you want with the person, but they're obviously too distant, too detached to ever give it to you. So you kind of live in your head a lot. But maybe you learn to live in your head because of your toxic upbringing. 
your safe zone was in your thinking and you kind of had to rearrange reality in this kind of fantastical way in your mind just so you could exist without being completely miserable. But you carry that fantastical way of thinking into your, your adult life. Narcissists, you know, it's easy to say narcissists love, you know, love, they, they're very much attracted to targets who have childhood trauma, but it's just instinctual. They don't really think about it. They just, they just click. They, they, they look at a certain person with a certain attitude and a certain way about themselves. They think, okay, this person is going to stick around no matter how distant I am, no matter how much I push pull, no matter how much I, I lie how much I cheat, all you got to do is love bomb them a little bit at the beginning, give them some implicit false promises, a bit of future faking, a bit of fake love at the beginning, and they're hooked. And then you, the target, you are hooked. How do you unhook? How do you detach? It's not that easy. And when you do, how do you heal? It's not that easy. Because even when you get over one person, you're attracting another person with the exact same traits. And, and, and when you're not with these people, you're fantasizing about those types of people, how they can serve you. It's just a really messed up way of thinking. So it's really important to understand that about yourself. It's hard to say what can fix it. But for the purpose of this conversation, it's more about acknowledging it as a first step. Are you somebody who has these childhood wounds? Are you somebody who attracts distant, unreliable people? Are you somebody who has this kind of fantastical way of thinking? This Disney-like perfection of romance? Well, if you, if you acknowledge that, then you think, okay, fine. Do you want to keep living that same life? Mm, maybe you do. Probably not. Okay, fine. Now what? Of course, that's a big question, and there's no easy answer. There are, there are certain things, certain tips. I won't get into that in this video, but there's a lot of content out there, and I do talk about healing in a lot of my other videos. So I'll let you watch those. Um, if you want to go into the discussion on healing from these maladaptive traits of yours. But I'm going to leave that there. Just acknowledge that when toxic people come into your life, it's not just that they're attracted to you. You're also attracted to them. 